everyone and welcome to a very special Christmas edition of Yesterday Today Sewing because today I am not sewing. Today it's about these. It is about the 12 days of Lorikeet Christmas. Now these little lovelies were something I made for my true love. One each for each day of the 12 days of Christmas and my true love husband and even Laurie rather loved these little lorikeets so I thought maybe it's worth showing you how you could make your own little crocheted lorikeets. Now I have to say I am not a crochet specialist by any stretch of the imagination. Mum taught me how to make granny squares way back when and um, the rest I had to kind of relearn by scratch let alone following a pattern. I found this pattern online it's actually for a robin it was produced by Brigitte Reed, and I will provide a link down below if you are really interested in the written version thereof. I have changed it a little bit certainly robin colours are very different and just for some of the shaping, I tried to do things differently as well. So even still, you should be able to follow what she's done and come up with something kind of approximating what I came up with as well. So I fully suggest check out her website. She's got some amazing stuff on there. Um, so thank you for helping to get me started on my lorikeet. Christmas journey. So I am going to make one with you today. I hope you get started if you would like to find out how to do it. Otherwise just stick around so you can enjoy the 12 days of Lorikeet Christmas. So just to give you a closer look at how little Lorikeet turns out. Again a variegated type of wool would probably actually look really cute especially for this if you look at lorikeets this is all sort of red yellow orange patchy sort of color so you know you could have some fun with your wools that you use what we are going to do is start here and work around to make the body of our bird Oh, I think we start up here on the head, work our way down and finish with the wings and the tail. And then these are lastly added with little knots and a few crochets for the beak. So while I was doing these for the most part, watching the test matches that we have over Christmas and New Year, I was easily doing one in an hour or two once I got into the, into the swing of it. So let's give it a go. So here's what you're going to need to make these lovely little lorikeets. The main colours at least, certainly red and green you'll use a fair bit. I, um, that's all I had left of my blue before I thought of actually videoing making this. So um, for this one, on this demonstration, I'll be using the very coloured one that I found in my stash little bit of orange, very tiny bit of black if you want to use wool for the eyes, otherwise you might be able to use beads or something like that if you would like. Of course you will need something fluffy to fill it with. And for the crochet hook I'm going to use a 3.5 mil crochet hook for this. Now for this we start with something called a magic circle. It's a really good way of making a nice small hole at the start. So let me take you through how to do that. Start with your wool over your index and middle finger. Bring it round and create an X like that. Continue to bring your yarn under and then hook it between your last two fingers to hold it secure. So that'll be how you start. Now turn it over and you're going to bring your crochet hook 
under this first thread and hook the main thread, bring it under and loop around like that. And then you're going to take your leading edge thread and you're going to bring it through that loop that you've made. And there you go. Now you can open up here and this here is your magic circle. And this is what you'll be working into. So we are going to make now eight single stitches on this loop. And so to do that, bring it through those two threads and make a stitch. There's one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. And eight. So, on the eighth stitch, this is where the magic happens. So grab your tail and pull it in. You'll see it takes up the slack in that circle. Keep bringing it in and it closes the circle off really, really nicely. So bring the tail into the middle and then to finish it off, do a slip stitch through that first stitch. And there you have it. That is your magic circle and it's a great way to start because it doesn't leave a big hole in the middle. So for our next round we are in going to increase evenly by four stitches which means you're going to put two singles in the first chain and then one single in each of the next two two singles in the one after that, one in each of the next two. So let us do two singles in the first chain. And yes, as you can see, I am not proficient, but just goes to show that you don't need to be. So that's two in the first, one in the next. And one. So at this stage, we should have 12 stitches and if you like you can count that's 12. we are going to swap out our colors because it's now time to start doing our rounds in the red and the green for the main body of the lorikeet so let's start with our red so for our first colored round we are going to increase by six stitches, which means we're going to put two singles in the first chain and one single in the second and keep repeating. So it'll be two, one, two, one, two, one. We're going to make the first six of these stitches in our red and then sometime around we've done six stitches, we'll switch to the green. So let's give that a go. So we put two in the first, one, yep, let me move the ends in, so there's one, and if I can see where I was, move out the way ends.
So by this stage, you should have 18 stitches, if you were to count them. 18. Good one. Okay, so this now becomes our fourth round. And for our fourth round, we're increasing evenly by nine stitches, which for this means it will be two in the first, one in the next, two, one, two, one. Switching over the colors at appropriate times again. Let's do it. So at this stage now, as we move into the red, we should have 27 stitches and it might be worth counting to make sure you're at least closed. Okay, so this becomes now row five that we're doing around. And for this, we are going to increase by three stitches, which simply means that we put two singles in the first chain and then do for the next eight stitches, just put one in. So it'll be two in that, eight singles, two, eight singles, two, eight singles. Let's give that a go. Okay, so in theory, you should, at row six, by the end of row five, beginning of row six, you should have 30 stitches, give or take one or two. It's a very forgiving one if you're just a couple stitches out. It's also quite forgiving of not being the most even in your stitches. For round six now, we're going to just do one in each. So one single in each of the stitches there. Again, swapping over red and green around the same time. So easy one to count. So that is 30 stitches going round, and that is the end of round six. Okay, so for round seven, we are going to increase by six stitches evenly, which means we'll put two singles in the first, and then one in each of the next four. Two, one in each of the next four. So let's give that a go.
So that is the end of round seven. And I'm just getting ready to switch over the threads again. For round eight, I sometimes, if I want a chubby lorikeet, keep increasing. So I increase by three stitches, which means two and then 11 singles. Or alternatively, sometimes if I think it's getting too chubby, I just keep going with singles um, in every one. But I think, let's have a look at him. I think this one, I'm just gonna do it all singles. Let's give it a go. So this is the end of row eight and we will again switch over our yarns. For this next one, when I have increased to 39 stitches around, I will be decreasing by three, which means I crochet two together, then one single in the next 10. For me though, I will probably decrease by about six because I want mine a little bit smaller. So I'll do two together, then I think it's about the next four-ish, something like that. So two together, four singles, two together, four singles, all the way around. So let's see how that goes. To decrease, and look, I never know whether I decrease correctly or not, but I take one through the first stitch, one through the second stitch, and then pull them all together. Is that the correct way to do it? I don't know, tell me in the comments if there's a better way of doing it, but it works for me. So I single the next four. So that's round nine. We've got one more round to go. For round 10, which will be the last round for the body. It's just going to be one stitch in each stitch. But rather than do the red, lorikeets often have this sort of a ring around their neck. So I'm going to switch to orange just for this one layer at the top of the body here. And there we go. So that now is the body of our little lorikeet. I like leaving a long tail because I might even use this in the stitching of it together. Simply pull it through that last stitch. And there we go. That is our lorikeet's body. All right, so I stopped to play for lunch when I got this body bit finished. Now it is time to work on the head 
and the wings, which will be the second piece of the bird. So for this, we'll be starting with another magic circle up the top in blue. So let's get started. So again, for the magic circle, start holding the end of your yarn over the two fingers, under, do it as a cross, bring that through and hold it firmly with your back two fingers turn over, hook under the first loop, grab the second, bring it up, twist it round and then get the leading thread and bring it through. So there we go. That is the magic circle again. Now this time we are going to start with nine stitches. So let's get going. and tight to make the loop and then do a slip stitch into that first one like so. Alrighty so here we're going to increase evenly by three for this second round which means we're going to put two singles into this here we go we'll put two singles into this first stitch and then one into each of the next two and two and one all the way through so here we go now two rounds on that. For round three we're going to increase evenly by four stitches which means again two singles in the first and then one each in the next two and so on and so forth. So that is round three completed. For the next two rounds, we're just keeping it the same. So it'll be two rounds of one stitch in each. You can even count, you should have 16 stitches. So we go around again. So it's one in each. Now this is where I decide if I actually like the size of the head or if I would like to make the head a little bit bigger. I reckon in the past I've often added another row. 
Let's have a look. I'm going to do one more row. So this will be round six and I'm just going to do one in each. So this is our bird's head. Now we want to swap to green for the wings. For this I tend to leave a long tail because I will use this bit for sewing the head onto the body. So I'll cut. Now, here is when we finally get to do something a little bit different. So in the next stitch, chain three. One, two, three. And so then we get to do a double crochet and that will go into the next stitch. So if you've not done a double crochet before, this is how you do it. Over and around, through, pick it up, take it through the first two and through the last. Go to the next stitch and do two double crochets. So round, through, pick up the thread, take the thread through the first two loops, take the thread through the remaining two loops, and another, another so again, take the thread around, through the same stitch, pick that up, back through, hook up your lead thread through the first two into the next one. So that's had two, so let's do this one in the next stitch, through, pick up through the first two, through those two. In total, you should count fourteen. Okay, so now we do a chain of three again. So one, two, three. For these first five stitches, we're going to do our two doubles. It does mean you're going to have to flip it over for this. Okay, or at least that's what I do. Seems easiest, works for me. So that's put two doubles in those first five stitches. For the next four, we're just going to do a single crochet in the next four. One, two, three, four. And then we go back to doing two of the doubles in the next stitches.
Okay. This becomes now, I think, round nine. I'm kind of losing count. For this last round, flip it over, we are going to put a double crochet, just the one in each of the doubles, and a single for those four singles in there. So you'll basically end up with a similar number. So of course we start with a chain of three to get us out there. One, two, three. And now it's just one of these into each stitch. Okay, and that is, I think, the wings done. So, let's cut off the thread, pull it through, and when I sew it all up, I'll just get that in with everything else. Now, what he does need is a tail. So we will be working on these four single stitches that we had from down there. All I've done is a, a simple loop. I don't know if that's the easiest way to do it, but that's what I found worked for me. And we are now going to crochet four stitches into these. for the second round of this, increase by four stitches, which basically means we'll put two into each of them. Two. And then one in each. it and I will probably do at least one more row of eight so a single stitch to then you basically decide how long do you want to make his tail I think I've normally stopped about there but you'd be welcome to give it a longer tail if you wanted to keep on going I'm going to stop there, I think. And again, I will thread that through when I finish off all these bits. So, our next step now is to sew him together and stuff him. For that, I will need my wool needle. So I'll be right back. Okay, first thing I do is stuff the body with whatever I've got. That's some old wadding from doing patchwork. I also usually, if I've got any ends and bits, I usually just stuff those in as well to get rid of them. So the way to start sewing this together is I usually find my bit of blue thread that I left and the head part of the top is going to be sewn to those orange stitches. Let me get the needle threaded. Try to centre it as much as possible on there and then I don't know if there's proper stitch to use. I just kind of do that sort of a stitch all the way along, matching it up as best I can.
the good ones. That was pretty close to stitch to stitch. So I am going to knot off this blue one. And it can just sit in there. Let's get some stuffing in that head now. Okay, and next we will stitch the green body to the wing section. Now there's no particular spot to put this, just try and sort of get the centre back matched to the tail there. Sometimes it's easier to have a few pins to help hold it down. And if you need to, even gather in the tops of the body a bit just to hold it in place. Now I've normally got one or two pieces of thread here that I can work from. And of course they're both on the same side this time, aren't they? Let's use this body piece first. to this sewing up bit. I just do it however it seems best to work. I sort of just trust that it'll all work out okay. It's not hard to redo the sewing if you absolutely need to. through, put the ends through, okay and that is now the little bird together so let's just get rid of some of these extra threads. So now he just needs a face. Okay, so here we have our nice little chubby lorikeet. Of course, he needs eyes and he needs a beak. So, first for the eyes, you could put on beads. I find it's just as easy doing a couple of French knots with the black wool. So here we go, two eyes for my little birds, and for the beak, so I just make a slip knot to get me started with a nice long tail, and I chain four or five, depending how long I think it needs to be. One. Knot it through, and then put 
pretty much just thread that in. Give it a quick knot to hold it in place. to hide it. There we have him, another little lorikeet for my collection. I'm not sure if I completely am taken with the uh, variegated blue. Probably if I could have got more of a variegated yellow, orange, red for the belly would have been a better choice. But hey, gives you an idea. And you know what, I've done lots of these now, not just the 12. <laughs> And I still love them. They certainly have personalities, but that's lorikeets for you. So let me know what you think. If you give it a go, do let me know what you do. So many cute birds you can make with this sort of pattern. So enjoy and have a very merry, very lorry Christmas. <laughs>